to the Bennington community. I'm so pleased to see all of you here. And as I look out, I see our funding partners, our construction team, our engineers, our partners, community members, board members, town of Bennington members. Um, and thank you so much. It speaks volumes to the impact that the housing and the work does in the neighborhood. So thank you for being here. Um, we know this will be a neighborhood that's enjoyed by many families for years to come. And I was thinking earlier, as I was trying to come up with notes for this, what makes a good neighborhood and a vibrant neighborhood and community? And I was thinking people who care about where they live, a variety of people from different demographics and socioeconomic backgrounds, property owners who care and responsibly maintain their property, affordability for all the residents despite their income, good neighbors, access to community connections, access to jobs, good schools, and public transportation. Based on that, I think we have a great recipe for success here at Monument View, so thank you all. All of the factors I just mentioned contribute to a strong and successful community, and we are pleased to have the opportunity to contribute to the bigger picture revitalization and economic development efforts in Bennington's downtown, such as the Buffalo Mall. And we think this is a beautiful complement to all the great work that's going to be going on here in Bennington. So a brief history of the Monument View project, for those that don't know it, and it's going to be brief, um, this project was one of the first that I, I was introduced to by Blair Sebastian, our interim director. Uh, when I arrived in Bennington about three and a half years ago, and it has been in various stages of planning at that point for approximately three years, maybe a little longer, when I arrived. So this has been a long time in the making. Uh, in fact, we finished four others in the meantime while we're waiting for this one to get built. Um, there was a degree of opposition to the build and some concerns by some of the neighbors, and we really hope that the finished product satisfies that and that you feel that this is a really wonderful addition to the neighborhood, and we're really proud of it, so thank you. Um, it was a long and sometimes difficult road to get to this point, and I want to take a moment to thank all of those that supported Shire's housing and this development when it was not always easy to do so. We hope that we have proven worthy of your good faith and belief in what we do. The celebration is for you as much as it is for us. This is a great example of what workforce and affordable housing can look like, and it really does speak for itself. So a few facts about the development. Sorry, there's some mosquitoes right there. They're in the grass. Um, so summary, the project um, attracted $7.3 million in investment in the Bennington community and helped to support jobs and local businesses. It includes 24 new units of housing, 16 two-bedroom and eight one-bedroom units. Um, the development includes six five duplexes and two larger buildings containing six and eight units. All are built to high energy efficiency standards. Thank, to, thank you to the support and guidance of Allison Ross from Efficiency Vermont, who was there with us every step of the way to make sure the blower tests were done well and the air sealing and going back over our work. And uh, so I think, you know, it makes a big difference in trying to make an efficient project to have somebody committed like that. The buildings are built to the highest standards possible so that we, as the property owners and managers, uh, do not have to recapitalize the buildings for many years and we may keep the rents at affordable levels. We set aside reserves each month to meet the ongoing needs of the property and conduct capital needs assessments every five years to plan for larger improvements without any impact to the residents in the long term. So I'm going to talk about the team a little bit. So the team, the development team on this project, it included a very talented and committed group of people who came together and worked through the day-to-day -day obstacles and built a beautiful project that fits so well in this neighborhood and is, in fact, its own little neighborhood. I hope that you indulge me briefly while I acknowledge a few people. Um, I hope I don't forget people. Uh, Naylor and Green Builders, especially Tanner Romano, Leo Fairbanks, who is the project manager, is not here, but he's here in spirit today. And Ron Bruce, who is the site supervisor, as well as all the guys who are here every day doing the hard work. 
Um, this was a challenging project, and I attribute much of the success to their hard work, team mentality, and professionalism. This is my fifth project working with Naylor and Green, and they're an amazing and talented group of people who take pride in the finished product, and they understand our mission and, and vision. Thank you so much to Naylor and Green. I'm looking forward to kicking off the next one together. Steve Shanker of S2 Architecture for designing these beautiful buildings with such attention to detail and for creating such a great site. I appreciated personally his patience and calm demeanor during our job meetings. He <laughs> was a very calming presence for us and a very even guy. <laughs> uh, he created a lovely neighborhood for our residents and his vision for the project is truly appreciated. NSK Engineering. Thank you to Jason Dolmich, Nick Myron, and Nicholas Ratzer for getting us through the challenges of this difficult site and for your commitment to the success of the project. I must mention that we completed the site work with no blasting. <laughs> Thank you all for your commitment. Um, the town of Bennington, most notably Mr. Dan Monks and Stu Hurd, uh, Bennington Select Board members who supported the project, the neighbors, most notably the Apple Ridge Condo Association who were so gracious to us and collaborative during construction. It was not easy for them. We were driving heavy equipment through their parking lot and they were great to us, so thank you to the Condo Association. Um, there's a few others I'd like to thank. Pearson and Associates, the electrical and mechanical engineers, RH Associates and Company, uh, Rebars and Mash, yes, that's an actual company. Knight Consulting and Engineering. Hayden Plumbing and Heating, great local guys who do a lot of work for our portfolio. We look forward to continuing to work with them here. Richards Group Insurance, Dave and Will Kate Marr, thanks for keeping us safe and secure. Um, Stebbins Spectacular Painting, I think they lived up to their name on this <laughs> one. <laughs> great name. Uh, Springfield Painting, Springfield Sensing. Home Depot, Abitella Flooring, and RK Miles. Thank you to my staff, to the Shire staff, for all your support as I was crazy in and out at meetings all the time and probably go with you nuts and murmuring under my breath and all of that. And now we're turning it over to you to get at least up and, and I hope we go to a beautiful project that the residents will love. Um, let's see. And I really want to thank Housing Vermont as our partners on this. So we are co-owners and we will be the management team on this. So we want to thank you for your partnership. We have built a beautiful project. Um, uh, this project is a little bit different than others in our portfolio in terms of the income mix and, and the range that's available for people um, in terms of income qualifying is something new to us and it's thanks to the Housing for All Revenue Bond administered through the HCB that this project incorporates a broader range of income limits and allows for a more diverse and thriving neighborhood affording us the opportunity to lease ho to households with incomes up to 120% of median. It's certainly not typical of our projects. Um, so not something we can do with our, our usual traditional funding sources. And that was made possible through Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. And speaking of Vermont <laughs> Housing and Conservation Board, how's that for a segue? <laughs> I want to introduce Jennifer Hollert, who is the Director of Policy and Special Projects for the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. To say a few words. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, Good afternoon, my name is Jen Haller, and on behalf of Gus Salig, our executive director and our whole housing team at the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, I want to say congratulations. This is really unbelievably beautiful and fantastic. Um, for those of you that may not know, the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board is a statewide organization. We were set up um, essentially to get your community tax dollars um, back um, to your towns and others for affordable housing projects, land conservation, and historic preservation, and we have the great privilege of doing that around the state, and we're able to do that here. Um, this is a really exciting time in the Bennington area. There are lots of great things going on um, due to some pretty fantastic local leadership, and um, those include things like Prospect Mountain, just in the next town over that I think is a resource for a lot of you, and VHCD was able to participate in that, and then Soon your community will be having another grand celebration around the Putnam Block, um, which has been such a priority and um, it's going to be transformative for your, your community. So congratulations on all of that. 
Um, you know, while we are right in the heart of Beddington and in the heart of this neighborhood, it actually was kind of a long road to get here. Um, it was long and winding, and um, uh, our board made its funding commitment to the project back in the spring of 2014, five years ago, when the plans for the project had started before that. Um, and there were many moments along the way where it would have been easy for this project to be lost. So I wanted, um, if you can bear with me for a second, just reflect back on that for a minute. Um, and it really, there were, um, it really happened in a number of stages. First, there was a need. There was a need and there was the opportunity to build in this um, difficult but ultimately perfect spot. And that need and that opportunity rose up. And then, Housing Vermont and Shires decided to partner up. And then the architects drew it up. And then our housing team at the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, led by Gretchen Rittenhouse, who's here, trying to hide in the back, um, uh, they wrote it up. They reviewed the application, they asked questions, they offered suggestions, and they ultimately made a recommendation to our board. And then the residents of uh, Bennington showed up. There were questions, and there were concerns, and they needed more information. Um, and there was um, a public process that allowed for that. And the town leaders of Bennington held up. Um, they answered those um, calls for more information, heard the concerns, but also continued to say, we need more housing in our community. And then the development team looked up. They took a, um, a look at the, they looked up from their design plans, heard what was um, being voiced, and made changes. Um, and then finally, the permits showed up. Um, <laughs> But unfortunately, the delays and the design changes, um, which ultimately made the project better, meant that the costs had really gone up. Um, now, through this period, the other funding agencies that you're also going to hear from, the Housing Finance Agency and the Department of Housing and Community Development, both of them made substantial um, awards to the project. We all held tight. We all have to report constantly to where the money comes, like, what, okay, are these projects getting completed or not? And it can sometimes be a little tricky when they're not, um, when they're taking longer than they need to, but I don't think there was ever a moment where any of those funding agencies wavered and said, um, you know, we're just not going to be able to wait any longer. And we're all in it for the long haul. Um, so then the HCB and some others, we re-upped. Um, we needed to put some more money in to help cover those costs, and we were able to do that because year in and year out, your state legislators and your congressional um, delegation stood up. They stood up for affordable housing and they spoke on behalf of the federal and state funding that helps make these things possible. And then the builders built it up. And now we're um, entering that really exciting phase that probably already going to be done where um, the project is leased up. Um, and that's when the really exciting part happens, and that means that people are going to be able to call this home and we'll begin to make connections and find opportunities and create um, memories um, and dreams. And that's really what everyone is shooting for. So to all of you, I want to raise you all up because everybody had a hand in this and say, again, congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, next, I'd like to bring up Josh Slade from the Vermont Housing Finance Agency. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Josh Slade from Vermont Housing Finance Agency. I'm a development underwriter there. Uh, this was not my original project. This project was underwritten by my former boss. Um, so I had a hard time getting here. Turns out, Hilltop Drive is not in Google Maps, <laughs> which is terrifying to discover when you're sitting in that company. Uh -uh. Uh, on behalf of the HFA, um, I really would like to wish Stephanie and the rest of the Shires team and Nancy and the rest of Housing Vermont a very hearty congratulations um, for sticking to the project um, to guess where we are here today. And that's all, so congratulations. <laughs> Um, Nancy Owens, I'm the president of Housing Vermont and, uh, and co-owner, co-developer, partner with Shires Housing. Um, I want to take a minute now to um, thank, specifically to thank uh, TD Bank for investing 
$4.6 million through the purchase of the low-income housing credits, which are administered by VHFA, um, providing $90,000 in permanent financing and $4.5 million in construction financing for Monument View. So, um, in more than our 30 years of working together, TD has invested over $112 million in affordable housing with Housing Vermont and our community partners like Shower Shires. So that's meant TD has helped to create nearly 3,000 homes for people all across Vermont. It's really remarkable, and they're a tremendous institution and a tremendous friend um, to affordable housing. And uh, we have a particular friend at TD Bank, <laughs> and that is um, Giselle Glockner. She's here today. Giselle is VP and Senior Relationship Manager at TD. And just last uh, year, um, a VHFA named Giselle the st uh, for a statewide award, an Innovation and Impact Housing Hero. And that was for her work, her personal work and her career where she's been at TD for a long time, shepherding hundreds of millions of credit in a variety of forms towards the development and renovation of affordable homes. And so I want to thank Giselle and ask her to come up and say a few words. Hi, my name is Giselle Faulkner, and I'm thrilled to be here this morning wearing two hats for TD Bank. One is the lender for the, the project that we got going here and also for the equity side of the bank. Um, I'd like to thank Stephanie at Shires and Nancy at Housing Vermont for the opportunity. It's great to work for an organization like TD Bank that can do this and it continues to do this. So we are thrilled about it. So anyways, thank you very much for the opportunity. and. As Mr. Rogers would say today, it's a wonderful day of the day. <laughs> thank you, Giselle. Um, next, I would like to invite Paul Major to come up from Representative for Senator Lakey's office. Hi, I'm Polly Major. I cover housing for Senator Leahy here in the state of Vermont. And Senator Leahy, sorry he can't be here today to see the incredible units and to congratulate you all. He's in D.C. where he's casting his 16,000th vote today. It's a big day for him. <laughs> uh, so he's sorry he can't be here. So over his long career of those 16,000 votes, he has been a strong supporter of affordable housing, financing, and community development. And he supports affordable housing because he believes in it. He believes that it builds community. What we see around us in these buildings is the physical manifestation of community. This is where workers are going to sleep, it's where kids are going to play, and it's where friends are going to meet. And he was in the Bennington community in the fall where he met with many community leaders as um, Jen mentioned what he saw was a community that's all pulling in the same direction and that's making housing a priority with this development with the Putnam Block. Uh, so he was really impressed by that and sees great things happening here in Bennington. He also believes that Vermonters shouldn't have to pay more than 30% of their income towards their housing costs. Recently, the Low Income Housing Coalition released their Out of Reach report that looks at the ratio of uh, incomes to what a uh, market rate apartment costs across the country. In Vermont, if you're working a minimum wage job, you need to work 80 over 80 hours a week to afford a market rate two bedroom apartment. So for a single mother with two kids, that's two full-time jobs. And what happens when she can live in an apartment from Shires like this and pay 30% of her income towards housing is that she now has time to spend with her children, time to be in her community, and income to afford medicine or food or a quality of life and housing is what makes that possible and finally he believes that federal investment in housing when it comes to vermont is put to really good use we have incredible housing organizations across the state you've heard from several of them here today and these are the organizations that when senator Leahy, as vice chair of the senate appropriations committee when he's at the negotiating table talking about what the priorities are for the federal government and what we spend money on, he can say, we should spend money on housing because I know when that money comes back to Vermont, 
they're going to make sure it gets used in the best way possible to build our communities. And next year, when he's, or this summer, when he's negotiating the 2020 budget, he's going to point to Bennington and say, look what it's done here. So thank you all for providing that example and for being that example of what financing can do in communities across the country. You have a national impact. I want to return to those 16,000 votes and say that each of these votes represents a decision where Vermont has had an impact over the nation's priorities. And Senator Lee, he sees where your priorities are in projects like this, and by doing so, you are having an impact and have over the nation's priorities for um, several decades. So thank you all for working with Senator Leahy to bring forward Vermont's priorities and for working with your community to make this incredible housing development possible. Thank you. Thank you uh, next, then, I'd like to invite Sheila Reed from Representative for Senator Sanders. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi, Hi. Mary. <laughs> Hi. Mary. <laughs> Um, Senator Sanders sends his congratulations to Shires Housing, Housing Vermont, S2 Architecture, Naylor and Green Builders, the engineering firm, I just forgot your, the, the three yeah, letters, okay. well, okay. thank you, sorry, um, the town of Bennington, your many funders, and especially the residents, the future residents of this beautiful new apartment complex in downtown Bennington. You are an inspiration in the fight to make affordable, energy-efficient homes available to the people of this region and throughout the state of Vermont, and actually throughout the country, as Polly says. Um, 24 beautiful new apartments in a designated downtown will make a dent in the demand and provide lovely homes for 24 families. It is a real honor for me to attend ribbon cuttings throughout the state on behalf of Senator Sanders and to witness the work of our affordable housing, financing, and development community. Please know that he honors your work and will continue to do all that he can to ensure that you have federal support and funding for your projects. It is no secret that we are in a national housing crisis. The level of income inequality is at an all-time high, and far too many people, for far too many people, the gap between wages earned and cost of housing grows wider by the day. The open, opening of Monument View Apartments means we are a little closer to the day when all Vermonters have access to safe, decent, and affordable housing. Thank you again to everyone who made this day possible. The Senator wishes he could be here. And to the first tenants, welcome to your new home. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome Elizabeth Morris, representative for Congressman Welch. Hello, uh, my name is Elizabeth Morris. I um, am a constituent services representative for Congressman Welch. Um, First off, um, the congressman wants to extend his regrets that he's unable to be here himself to celebrate this momentous day. I guarantee he'd rather be here uh, than in D.C. right now um, with all of you. Um, but first, I want to also acknowledge that people have done so much to make this project a reality, Shires Housing, Housing Vermont, and so many other players and agencies. Um, the number of people here today really speaks to the testament of Bennington. Um, and the Shires overall, and how many people in Vermont really care about the community here. Uh, Congressman Welch does really feel like the federal government is not doing right by its rural areas, and he believes that we need as a nation to put an emphasis on protecting rural America and making sure that it has the support, services, and critically important affordable housing that it needs to thrive. Um, fortunately, it's not an issue of rural Vermont, it's an issue of rural America. Um, and the issues that, you know, arise throughout discussions of affordable housing are, um, so far, ones that Congressman Welch's colleagues and districts across the nation are experiencing as well. Uh, and it's where he feels that he can get um, the most work done on these kinds of issues. 
and there is so much work to be done. There, the um, 24 new units in this area are, is going to make a, a dent, and it's going to be fantastic for the families here. But as you are all well aware, uh, in order to afford a modest two-bedroom apartment at the fair market rent in Vermont, Vermonters need to earn over $22 an hour. Um, that is absolutely unacceptable. It, it, it's something that the congressman is abhorred to hear. Um, and as we know, the average Vermonter in Vermont doesn't earn even close to that. In fact, the average Vermonter earns almost $10 less than that amount. Um, take a no moment for that to sink in. That means that Vermont families are desperately trying to find a way to make their ends meet, paying rent, and stressing on how to get enough money to afford the other many inevitable expenses that arise. That means the soccer uniform for your kid, or the field trip fee, the cost of braces, or the unexpected car repair that every family has. So families in Vermont deserve much better. Uh, the current situation is truly unacceptable, and that's why Congressman Welch will continue to do everything he can just to support the much-needed federal resources for affordable housing. Um, so thank you once again to all of the wonderful agencies who are continuing to doing the on-the-ground work. Um, he's always so impressed by the agencies throughout the state. They're strategic, and they make it so much easier for him to work with them federally. So thank you um, to everybody here today whose hard work and dedication makes projects like Monument View Apartments possible. Thank you. I also wanted to recognize Patrick Scheld, who's here from the Vermont Community Development Program. Thank you so much. They provide funding that actually is granted to the town of Bennington and then on to Shires as a loan. So thank you very much for your support and for putting up with all of our phone calls and questions all the time. <laughs> you very wonderful. So thank you. Anytime. Thank you, Stephanie. And I wanted to acknowledge uh, Representative Morrissey, who's here as well, and thank her for being here today. Um, so with some closing remarks, uh, Nancy Owen, Executive Director of Housing Vermont. Thanks, Stephanie. And thanks, um, you know, to our great uh, congressional delegation. We really, we really do appreciate you and all um, of your efforts to help us do our work here in Vermont. Um, so it's warm that I'm <laughs> in here. <laughs> Everybody's fanning, and I am. Um, I do want to share some remarks and um, with you, so bear, bear with me just a little bit. But it's it's always a pleasure to be here on these days of celebration and and to share the celebration with so many good friends and longtime partners. And Housing Vermont is really gratified to be working with Shires Housing as in the partnership on this project and working with Stephanie and her team. And you, um, the Bennington community is lucky to have an organization like Shires in your community doing the work that they've been doing and, and stewarding um, the homes and the families um, with the services and the management that they, that they provide. Um, I also want to extend a really big thank you to my staff who worked particularly on this project, Matt Moore as a developer and Lynn Mansfield as a project manager. Um, we're up in Burlington. It's a it's a long drive back and forth, and they've been making that drive for years, uh, every week. And um, and in fact, my staff, Housing Vermont, has been very active in Bennington um, with Shires and with others over the past four or five years. So, um, just last year, we completed the renovation of a number of buildings, seven buildings on four different sites all around the county, in partnership with Shires. And the year before that, we worked together on Applegate Housing, renovating that long-standing affordable housing um, to really bring that up to speed. And, and through that process, Shires um, became co-owner with Housing Vermont, and we transferred our, our, um, um, our management to, that, to Shires. And, and so we've been doing a lot more work together, and it's, it's like I said, it's just been really great to be able to do that. Um, so in, in our role, as, as I've been describing it, as developer and financer of both affordable housing and community development activities, you know, we try to stay abreast of, like, the broad economic trends. But um, you can hear today, and I think you can see in the news every day, that the affordability, the housing affordability trend in Vermont is, is visible to everybody, right? And not just to us sort of community development geeks wondering what's happening next. You know, 
we know um, we know that housing development in Bennington County has slowed way down over the past five years. So less housing is being built. And we know that the vacancy rates, um, especially for affordable apartments, the affordable apartment vacancy rate in Bennington is less than 1%. Now, a healthy market has a 5% vacancy rate. And we know that here in Bennington, just like many places across the nation, um, there's a real severe shortage of houses. And if you can find a home, the cost is often out of reach. And that's, that's for a, a really broad group of people. Um, and we talked a little bit about this gross median income and all that, but the, the, the market rent for a two-bedroom apartment in Bennington is over $1,100 a month. And um, an affordable two-bedroom apartment here, the average rent for an affordable two-bedroom apartment here at Mountain View is going to be $300 less than that. It's really remarkable. And admittedly, for some folks, that rent in the $700, $775, dollars a month range, that's still going to be out of reach for some folks. But Vermont doesn't face this housing dilemma of short supply and high cost alone. It's a really, it's a systemic national problem, which is really affecting the well-being of people. We heard, you know, examples and thinking about how cost affects people's daily lives. We also know it affects business growth, that there are, um, I know, employers here in this community that have talked about the shortage of housing and the high cost of housing is, is harming their ability to recruit and retain new employees. And so this housing production, you know, it's not just Bennington County, it's happened all across the state of Vermont. From 1960 to 2000, Vermont on average built 800 new apartments every year, year after year after year. But starting around 20, um, 2001, we average um, build is 400 apartments a year, half of what we have been doing. So for nearly 20 years, our housing production has been slowed. And here, as across the country, the housing that is being built is often for people who are of higher incomes, larger homes, um, not multifamily homes, or not multifamily apartments, or not starter homes. And so Harvard's Joint Center for Housing um, just published a report a few weeks ago on the state of the nation's housing. And in it, they noted that nationally, housing construction, again, has not kept pace with household growth for an unprecedented eight years. And they conclude, quote, that the relative lack of smaller, more affordable new homes suggests that the rising cost of labor, land, and materials is making it unprofitable to build for the middle market. Well, we know that's true, right? Labor, land, and materials are too high, and we know that's true in Vermont. So we are um, recognizing that. The state legislature has recognized that. And, um, and thankfully, in 2017, the state legislature passed a housing revenue bond, which ultimately raised $37 million to finance new construction of housing for renters and homeowners that the market is not serving. And um, Stephanie mentioned, and others talked about that, how in addition that this new money is enabling us to serve a broader range of households than we have in the past because the market is not working for lots of people. And Monument View is one of these many buildings that's being completed this year because of this additional funding that we have from the state. And at the same time that we had this new money from the state, we've also had federal, new federal housing credits that came to VHFA. And that combination of new resources really created a burst of housing construction uh, we at Housing Vermont have over $60 million of construction happening right now. It's amazing. And it's all good news for this response to this housing crisis. But frankly, a burst, is, a burst of construction is not enough. And next year, these funds will have all been spent, spent in great ways like here at Monument View, but they'll be gone. And the federal increase will be done. That's not a permanent raise. So our production is going to drop back down to that sluggish pace that it's been at, which means you know, we're going to still have working people struggling to afford homes on wages that don't support the true cost of living. So we have a systemic problem, 
across the whole nation and here in Vermont, and we need to work on some systemic solutions that really draw on all of our connections. We need to create policies and support ideas that foster an entire community where there's growing economy and also a, a sufficient income for people to, to live. We need, like we have here at Monument View, the government, the nonprofit sector, and the business sector to work together to solve this problem of our broken housing market. And we need to bring our best selves to the hand at task. Um, I think, you know, it's one of those both and pro kind of propositions where we can't move ahead without a shared vision for our communities and for our future. And I hope as we, as we talk about and work together on a shared vision that it will include more homes for everyone, just like the ones that we've built here today and are opening in our doors to here at Monument View. So thank you all very much for your part in this, in this property, and thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to give a board member of ours an oh, opportunity awesome. to come up. Yes, really it is baking in here. <laughs> and I am going to, I am going to no. make this as short as possible. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge uh, Londa Weissman. I was walking around this area when just Apple Ridge was here and it was a vacant lot. Mm -hmm. And I was either with Blair or John Broderick. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. It's hot. <laughs> anyway, Londa who was a, a, a supporter of Shire's Housing, believes in our mission, lives in North Bennington. And we were up, sort of, up uh, that way, and she looked out and she saw the monument, and she said, what a perfect name for this project, <laughs> Monument View. So, if anybody asks, how did this become Monument View? It's pretty self-explanatory, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd like to, I would like to uh, give kudos to Londa Weissman for that. So, thank you. Yeah.